Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part two to what if Naruto had the Renegon. This is obviously because you guys hit the like goal on the last part, basically making it so you guys will get a part two. So I never actually mentioned this too much because, you know, I never really do, but I actually do have a Discord and I have left, I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. So make sure to go check that out and discuss some weird topics because there's a lot of weird things that go on in the Discord. Don't question it. So, with that being said, the like goal on this video for you guys to get a part three it will be 150 likes. And with that being said, let's just, you know, do a little brief recap of what happened in the last part. So Naruto was born with the Renegon. He didn't have some weird way of acquiring it later on in the story. So, he basically, when as he was, like, growing up, would be basically feared and respected throughout the village. Uchiha would resent him, you know, before they got massacred by Itachi. And Naruto would then graduate from the academy, being placed on Team 7, just like in the original Sakura and Sasuke. He defeats Kakashi in the bell test, using teamwork to be able to basically actually pass it. Before getting assigned a C-rank mission, he defeats the Chunin brothers completely by himself. And in the last part, we actually like left off with Naruto basically ducking under the sword, as Zabuza basically just kind of chucked it at him. So, with that being said, let's actually get into the new material of this what-if. Naruto activates his Renegon because I'm giving him the ability to deactivate and activate it and everything like that just because, you know, I can. And he basically tells Kakashi, he's like, I'm gonna fight him before Naruto starts running towards Zabuza. Kakashi obviously wouldn't exactly appreciate this, but he can't really do anything because he didn't even have his headband lifted yet. Naruto has the Renegon. So as Naruto's running over to Zabuza, Zar Zabuza would basically be like, <laughs> fucking idiot kid, and he pulls up his sword. And as he's swinging down, Naruto pretty casually dodges out of the way before placing his hand against, you know, um, Zabuza's body and saying, Almighty oh, push. And as Zabuza goes sent, gets sent completely flying in the opposite direction, basically not really being able to do anything about this because he, like, he would not be able to overpower the shit, the Almighty push, obviously. And he's just like, Wait, what? How did... And then Naruto says, Almighty pull, and a black receiver rod comes out of Naruto's hand, and he just slams it right into Zabuza, pinning him to the ground. Zabuza's like, wait, what? I can't move! I can't move! Naruto makes a few more of these receivers and starts place th placing them all around Zabuza's body. Not killing him, but basically incapacitating him, making it so he can't leave, making it so he can't even move at all. Naruto basically just kind of smiles because he's just like, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Because he didn't want to do something like that against Kakashi, even though he could have ended the fight almost immediately. But he decided, hey, he might as well show everybody his how basically overpowered he is. So, Zabuza would be like laying on the ground at this point, and this is where Haku would jump in. He'd basically be like, he's trying to think of a way he could make it look like he'd you want, you know, want to kill Zabuza. So, he jumps down, and he pulls out all the receiver rods. Naruto would be looking at this, and he's just like, what is he doing? What, what is this guy doing? Before Haku picks Zabuza up, ho hoisting him over his shoulder and saying, Bye! And Naruto would be like, Do I just let him leave? And he can clearly see Haku jump away. He, like, he can clearly see it. Like, they can't, like, but he's not that fast, compared to Naruto, at least. Naruto's like, do I just let him leave? Or do I, like... And he turns around and looks at Kakashi, and he's just like... He kind of just shrugs it off, because he's just like, well... It doesn't really matter. If we encounter them later, I can just easily, easily defeat both of them again. So with that, they end up going to Ta Tazuna's house. I cannot talk right now. And they end up doing a little bit of training. So Kakashi would basically be showing everybody a few different jutsus. And Naruto basically just kind of copies them almost immediately. Like, basically any jutsu he sees, he can just instantly copy and pretty much masters it completely. So, Naruto would basically be able to do literally anything. Anything he saw somebody else do. So, say Zabuza used, like, a water prison on him, he would be able to, you know, completely copy that. So, with that being said, Naruto basically begins training, and he learns things really quickly, obviously. He has mastery of all five chakra natures, because he's pe watched people like Asuna and everybody like that do different things. Like, he can infuse the wind, like, chakra nature onto his sword, or not sword, um, onto his kunai, and that would help him out in fights and everything like that. So, with that, a few days would pass, because, you know, that this would just be training. This wouldn't be Kakashi needing to recover from his little thing. They would end up going to the bridge. 
So with that happening, they all end up going to the bridge where they would have their next encounter with Zabuza and Haku. So with them showing up, Zabuza and Haku would still be there because, you know, they're kind of like being paid to try to stop this from happening. So Naruto would basically be like, ah, here for round two, I see. And Zabuza would instantly feel a little bit of fear from Naruto, knowing that he has the writing on, but he would basically try, like, putting that into the back burners of his mind. So, Nar Zabuza would basically be like, um, I, he's like, he doesn't want to fight Naruto at this point. And I'm gonna say that Naruto wouldn't actually take part in this battle, at least not yet. Sasuke would go and fight Haku, while Kakashi would go and fight Zabuza. So the fights would go basically the same. You know, there wouldn't really be too much of a difference. Sasuke would go inside of the, you know, little ice pr ice mirror prison thing, and he would basically get trapped in there. Naruto would have to go jump in and help him out, but he pretty much wants to, you know, watch the battle for a little bit longer. So right as Sasuke is about to basically be killed, Naruto would jump in. He'd use his kunai to deflect all of the different, like, little needles that Haku just threw at him. Pretty easily, actually. And, you know, because he can react to that, and he can clearly see everywhere that Haku is going. He can clearly see the lines, and every he can clearly see Haku in, in basically general. So, that Naruto would be able to pretty easily and handily defeat Haku. He would maybe even be able to break some of the mirrors simply by using a few almighty pushes to just, you know, say, yeet and get out of here to the mirrors. Like, he could do a lot of different things in this scenario. Like, there's a lot of different things that he could do. So he managed to catch Haku, he could rip out his soul, he could use the Ashura path to do all kinds of different things, he could use a bunch of summons. There's really no way that Naruto could end up losing this fight unless he was just a complete and utter idiot. And even if he was a complete and utter idiot, he could summon the King of Hell, jump in it, completely heal himself, or he could use the King of Hell to kill Haku by basically being like, yeah, you lie, by getting him to lie to it, and, you know, he could rip out Haku's tongue and make him bleed out. So it's like, there's so many things that Naruto could do in this battle. Like, he would easily be able to win no matter what happens in this fight. So, I'm gonna say the scenario would be Naruto would just basically, um, almighty push all the mirrors away, and they'd all, like, go and shatter, and Haku would fall to the ground because he was going in between two of the mirrors at the time. So he kind of just falls down, and he's like, well, damn, what do I, what do, I do now? Naruto then uses Almighty Pull, pulling Haku towards him before holding him by the neck. He starts basically sucking his soul out, because he's just like, I haven't used this ability yet, and he removes the soul from Haku. He gains all the knowledge that Haku basically had from that, because that's like a really good form of interrogation, and you can basically know everything once you pull out the person's soul, and he gets told basically everything about Haku. Naruto then is like, oh... Damn, <laughs> he learns all these different things about Haku's clan and how much, like, Haku respected Zabuza and everything like that. So, Naruto gains a little bit more respect for Haku as he drops him to the floor dead. So, Naruto would be like, okay, well, I might as well just watch the fight between Kakashi now. And he sees Zabuza use a water dragon. Naruto copies the water dragon. Z ha um, Nar Ugh, my god, what am I talking about? Then, Zabuza would trap... Um, Kakashi inside of a water prison, and Naruto would copy that jutsu, but then he would basically run up, basically, you know, go a little bit closer before using Almighty Pull, sucking Zabuza out of the water prison, basically making it so that he couldn't have his hand in it, and Kakashi would be outside of the water prison now, and then Naruto would basically just kind of grab Zabuza and be like, well, I might as well learn a few things about you, and he ends up ripping Zabuza's soul out as well. So, he learns a few different things about, you know, Zabuza, he learns about, like, all of his ambitions and everything like that, and he learns about the, like, gangs, or, like, the gang that's about to go to the actual thing. And as he's, like, taking in all this information, the gang would actually show up. Naruto would drop Zabuza to the floor, and Naruto would basically walk over there. He walks up straight to the gang leader, basically no, nobody else even being able to scratch him, or like so much as like touch him at all really, and he straight up just walks up to him. He grabs him and he rips out his soul too. He learns about a, di a few different things and learns about all the different things that the bridge builder was actually doing, and Arto realizes how like good this method could be for interrogation, because he's never actually ripped out somebody's soul before, he's never really had the option option to, because he can't really kill a, another Leaf Shinobi, really. I mean, I mean, like, he could, <laughs> but he probably shouldn't do that. So, 
Obviously, the gang leader drops to the floor basically completely dead, and all the little, like, henchmen around him would be like, D -d -w what? <laughs> Before Naruto basically just makes a summon, and it wipes out all the little henchmen, the ones that actually, well, you know, the ones that didn't run away when they saw Naruto rip out their little leader's fucking soul. So, Naruto then decides, he's like, okay, I'm gonna walk back to Kakashi. He tells Kakashi about Zabuza and, like, the gang leader and everything that he basically learned from them. And Kakashi's like, you could be, like, a really... Like, he knows that Naruto would be a really good asset for the Leaf Village already with his running on. But he didn't just know how quite how much. He just basically saved Kakashi's life before getting all this information, using this massive summon, and then everything like that happened. Naruto summons the King of Hell, and he's just like, Kakashi, go inside of that, it'll heal you, because Kakashi had a little bit of damage to the fight. He tells Sasuke to do this as well, with Sasuke actually having a uh, uh, Sharingan activated at this point. K -K Kakashi basically tries, he's like, okay, I trust you, Naruto, and he jumps inside of the King of Hell. Once he jumps out, he is completely healed, no injuries, no anything like that, full chakra, and he's completely fine. He doesn't have to go through any, like, recovery from Sharingan use or anything like that. He's like, whoa, that's, that's a little weird. Um, and then Sasuke would end up jumping in as well, healing all of his ne needle wounds and everything like that. And at this point, Sakura didn't actually, like take part in any battle, so she wouldn't have any injuries or anything like that. And Naruto would end up needing to heal. So, they end up heading back to the village because, you know, they kind of already did, or Naruto kind of basically soloed this mission by himself with absolutely no difficulty, and he even saved um, Kakashi from something that Kakashi couldn't really avoid at all. So, Naruto and they are, Team 7 heads back to the village before Kakashi basically explains to them that in a month or so, the tuning exams, I don't actually know exactly what the time limit is, but with that, like, how long after they got back from the village from that mission and the tuning exams would happen, but K Kakashi would basically tell them, he's like, yeah, the tuning exams is coming up, you guys should start training for it, because I think you guys are ready to enter. They all get pretty excited for that, because they're like, yay, we get to become tuning now. And everybody begins their training, including Naruto, who wants to master some of his abilities a little bit more. He watches more fights go on, and he learns more different, like, jutsus and everything like that. So, with that, Naruto then enters the tuning exams. But, that's where I'm going to leave this part off. So, see you guys in the next part. Peace out, bye.